Playing tribute to World Championship Pro Wrestling. I'm with Paul Jennings. Paul, some of the best memories you have of World Championship Wrestling. What are they? Well, I, I say uh, memories. Uh, you know, there's quite a lot of those, Steve. Uh, I think when I used to drive the rest of the country towns was interesting, and uh, and doing the commentary. And if I ever uh, called a match or announced a match which was against, say, one of the heels, I would cop it badly. I remember once Brute Bernard chased me around the Palais in Geelong, upstairs and downstairs, and I was absolutely scared stiff. And he was absolutely, he was right up, he was just was crazy man. Too, wasn't big it? man, a crazy man, but he did not like me saying, and the winner is, whoever it was, it might have Mario Milano that night, or it was, and uh, uh, he was very disappointed. He took it out on me. I mean, I'm always the last man standing. The announcer's the last man standing. They cop the abuse from the crowd uh -huh. if the decision goes against what the crowd want. Well, we're going to be meeting some more mm -hmm. of the wrestlers in just a moment. Uh, right now, it's time to enjoy a musical act that's in... I will in Australia and concert do performing an acoustic version. You know what I want you to do? I want you to take cots. I want you to lay him out. I want you to make a deathbed for Cox. And in that bed, I want off the top rope with the butcher's axe to sever the head. Uh, take his head right off, Abdullah. Right what a treason. You know, my heart bleeds when I think of the general losing $1,500 because Killer Carl Cox double-crossed. However, this is not a, not a double-cross. This is a very sound piece of advice. There you have it. Well, who were those guys there? Just run us well, through those Well, that was uh, Big Bad John and mm -hmm. Dick the Bulldog Brow having a bit of a verbal exchange. In the middle there was uh, the great Lord Athel Layton who handled the territory of Detroit and Toronto. And uh, he was he had a marvellous uh, speaking voice you know, and he had a, a real dignified approach to it. And uh, uh, he, he taught me a lot too, actually. He said, Paul, if you can do resting commentating, you can do anything. <laughs> you Good, now, so I've got a list of some incidents that happened during the uh, heydays of World Championship Wrestling. The time Haystacks Calhoun, heaviest man in wrestling, uh, split the ring. That did happen, yes, he, uh, he certainly did because of his enormous weight. I mean, uh, if he travelled in an aeroplane down in economy, he'd take up at least three seats. I mean, that's how big he was. Uh, and Gorilla Monsoon was another giant in weight. I mean, I don't know how they carried that weight, but there was enormous weight. The time mm. killer Carl Cox brain busted Jack Little. What happened there? Well, uh, yeah, the brain buster uh, took place. Uh, Jack just got in the way. Uh, that can happen uh, <laughs> as uh, uh, referees can get in the way of the exchanges. And uh, I got in the way myself uh, as a ring announcer. I jumped into the ring to separate uh, like Spiros Orion from someone. And he, he must have mistaken me for a, an opponent. And he, uh, he sent me down to the canvas and out onto the floor at Festival Hall. It gave me uh, one hell of a shake-up. But uh, it's the last time I was going to go and break up wrestlers. And the mm. time, we talked about this before, the time Playboy Gary Hart uh, caused Mario Milano to fall under his evil spell. What's your version of what happened there? Well, exactly what Mario said is that uh, he was offering him uh, incentives and uh, an attractive offer. And uh, I was disappointed when Mario uh, was uh, working for him because I remember watching the match against Red Bastine that particular day. And Red was absolutely... Uh, uh, bamboozled. He was stunned by uh, the way that uh, Mario was uh, resting, but um, that's the way it was in those days. And uh, and and Mario felt that uh, uh, it was an attractive offer, and away he went with it. But uh, to, to, of us looking, he came. to us looking at that footage now, it seems almost incredible that those men could take that sort of punishment, blow after blow. How, how, you saw it all. How do you explain it? It's extraordinary. They're physically fit. They have to be, and they did train out every day at the uh, every day at the gymnasium at Michael Hunt's gymnasium in those days. And uh, they had to be agile, and they uh, and they're falling in that. They just had to know. I mean, they just uh, they had to be right up with it. They, I mean, nobody could just walk into a ring and wrestle, expect to wrestle. There's a lot of training going into it. Someone who saw it better than anyone is uh, was along with you for all of those years. Uh, probably the most recognised referee from World Championship Wrestling. Please welcome Tony Marino. <laughs> Oh, 
seen him for 20 years. Is he that, looks oh, the same. That long, right? yeah. yes. How are you, Tony? Pretty good, pretty good. Tony, you saw a lot of fights from very close. Oh, yes. Who was the toughest fighter you ever saw? The toughest one I ever saw, I have to say, was a Brut Bernard. Brut Bernard. He was mean, tough, and many times I was scared myself. Even I get the rules in the ring, I just had to be out of his way. Something that amazed me was that they'd always get to the counter too, and then having that be brain busted, they would have been through the most incredible ordeal, but they'd somehow just muster up that last bit of energy to shrug off off their assailant before the third, you got the third counter. Right. When I'm there, you see everything. If the guys lift his shoulder, one, two, well, that's it. I have to start all over again. But where did that energy come from, those wrestlers? Do you know well, where they drew on those I think, reserves? I think that wrestlers, they come from with the energy because that's where they're training all the time. Mm. It's training, 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 and eat well. What was the most unusual thing that you saw in the ring, Tony? Oh, there was a match, I think, was uh, with uh, Ken Curtis, Mark Lewin, and Fuji. They jump out of the top rope and they split his arm right open. That was really bad. Oh. Yes, it was. And uh, oh, but in the ring, anything can happen. What about foreign objects? A lot of foreign objects. Yes, in yes, yes. They always try to sneak things in the trunks or in the boots or somewhere. They always come up with something. What are some so. of the most unusual foreign objects? I mean, would you get <laughs> would you get golf sticks or horse jelly shoe? babies? A horseshoe. A horseshoe. Yes. Usually a piece of wood. Piece of wood or, um, or a, a stone all tapped up, you know, with the gloves and everything. But, uh, yes, many things. That's, that's extraordinary. We've got some footage. Did you ever do one of those ones in a cage? Yes, many times. Let's have a look at how the wrestling occurred in a cage. Big Bad John is towering over in the corner. And now, this is what they've been waiting for. Roll up on Eric the Hog and that little John. Now they're going, but he is with Mary West as a human shield. And the poor referee in the middle as the People's Army, Ayub, Curtis, Lewin and Arian, big bad John Coward that he is, use the referee Molly West as a human shield. Extraordinary. That's a cage match of very serious ones. But you were in the cage as well? Yes, yes. And uh, you, you were injured? Well, many times. I still have got proofs up here on my head. Oh. <laughs> it's, well, uh, I tell you what, uh, anything could happen right now. There's a lot of hate about to happen. We have the current Australian wrestling champions, the inheritors of the brutal tradition of Bulldog Brow and Skull Murphy, the fabulous kangaroos Ken Dazzler, Dunlop and Wayne Lofty Pickford. Uh, and the hard for the Greek community, Con Iacovini. If I could just start with you, if you could just uh, give it a rest, guys, for a second. Con, uh, you're obviously the, the hero of the, the Greek community. Uh, what, uh, what, what, is your, what does your wrestling career hold for you in the immediate future? Well, so I'm losing. losing. Uh, That's all he losing. does. Losing. You know, Steve, you didn't tell me there was going to be clowns here tonight. I would have bought the kids. Yeah. Anyway, but, uh, I'll get back to the point there, Steve. Yes, I've been doing a lot of OS trips, you know, um, recently, and uh, I've come back and to hear a lot of flack from these two people who have said they've put their titles up. But every time they put their titles up, they seem to be on a vacation or overseas. Now, I've, I found that pretty Crossing funny. Out. I don't know how you find that. Crossing but you know what? I, I really believe these guys, I've heard all the rave I've heard about these guys training, and they said, look, they're, they're training hard, they're, you know, their guts are going down, but they're going down to their knees. That's the problem. <laughs> Show for an interview, not to be insulted by yeah. a Greek peasant warrior. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do, guys? Huh? First of all, hey, tell we, you something. Do you, you know what your problem is? Just because your hair looks like spark ones, you think you're champions. 
You want to see a body? You want to be in shape? This is shaping, man. That's what it's all about. If you want to get top of it at this point, you turn around and I'll do it straight away. If you want to make a big deal Anybody can take steroids. Anytime. Anyone Anytime can take steroids. Take steroids. We were trained by Roy Heffman, who was a master of wrestling. I don't want to get Full-scale draw here at Tonight Live at Channel 7. Anything could happen. We're just about out of time. Paul, I can't believe this is it's come well, to this. Tony Marino's got his hands full this occasion. I can't believe it. Like it's tonight show. Like oh, and I guess, look, we're going to have to leave you Australia. It's going from bad to worse. We'll let you know the outcome tomorrow night. Tony, set it down. Thanks for being with us, Australia. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks.